would be her time. And that kind of that does make sense because from what I've seen and heard, I think she's more to the left than even Bernie Sanders is. I think she makes him look conservative compared to her ideology that she wants to do. So that would kind of make sense. You have Bernie go in and, you know, it seems like a slow transition that's been happening. And by the time she comes around, it would be, you know, people won't care as much because they'll be so sensitized to it. Yeah. And they'll be more open to, to, to you know, Bernie's just, a, he's a very, you know, grating, old, grumpy uncle. Um, and, and she's not. No. And this, oh, I, I, I never wanted to run for Senate and all that is a bunch of BS. I mean, it's the best way to gin up the base. Oh, I don't want to run. No, I don't really want to do it. I know I'd be good, but no, I don't want to do it. And then she has the people, you know, banging down her door supposedly for Senate. And that's what's happening as president. And with Bernie, I just, I, I'm hoping someone doesn't sneeze on the poor man because I think he's just going to blow away into the dust if someone does. <laughs> uh, well, he's. Oh, look, I would love to see the the, uh, the Democrats actually nominate this guy because he would get totally and absolutely crushed in in a, in a general election. Um, Hillary, on the other hand, that he, my my concern with Hillary is that she isn't taken out. That there are so many American Americans that are just willing to look past her obvious flaws and faults and illegality. Uh, to, just because they want to be able to say, just like they did with Obama, to say that, yeah. oh, we elected a woman. You know, we elected a black guy. Oh, now we're electing a woman. Yep. I, but the polls right now, if you look at a lot of them, if Hillary's the candidate, she loses to a lot of the Republican um, candidates yeah, in the all, polls. All the top candidates uh, on the Republican side now handily beat Hillary. Including, I know people don't like to hear this, but including Jeb. Hmm. I didn't. I didn't see that one. I wouldn't doubt it. Um, I'm not a Jeb, uh, and I, well, I I'm a very. Bi- I, I I believe in George Bush. I like him as a president. I didn't agree with everything he did. Did he do some mistakes? Yes. I don't think he did that bad as a president. Now his brother, I think his brother is a little too far left. Yeah, I, um, you know, I, I think people are just tired of having uh, a bush. I mean, as a, yeah, I mean, think about this. Within within one generation, the GOP is telling us that we should have three members of the same family be president. I mean, this is, you know, we're 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 a democratic republic. We're not a we're not a monarchy here. Yeah, it's. I'm getting tired of having the same old type uh, candidates. I know. Okay, Obama wasn't the same. All he was a total new one out of nowhere. But uh, not counting him, it's we've had the same thing for God knows how many years. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, he is. Well, I guess you could say that he is. He is the fresh point in all of this because he is the new. Um, because you know you had you had Bush and then you had Clinton and then you had Bush and then it tried to be Clinton again, but we kind of got it broken up with Obama and now we're trying to be Clinton again. Or Bush, and I remember the memes going around. Uh, you know, uh, for presidency, you know, Bush versus Clinton. Quick, what year is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this whole thing is, is trying to repeat itself, and it doesn't seem like either party is learning their lesson. No, uh, definitely and, the Republicans aren't. The, the, I think the Republican Party as a whole, um, especially the establishment part of it is actually in trouble. I think they are in deep trouble that it could ruin the party for years to come. The, the establishment is losing is losing its grip, and they don't like it. However, the, 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 the thing about the establishment is, and this is where the, um, you know, the, the Rhino GOP, um, this is where the left sometimes gets it right. You know, the current GOP good old boy establishment, the Rhinos, they're a bunch of old white men. Now, they're all getting old and dying off. And the new breed of GOP is not like them at all. I mean, you see a lot of the younger uh, senators and congressmen being elected that are Republican and conservative. They're nothing like the old establishment GOP. And they're starting to get into leadership positions. Now, I know that, you know, some people are saying, well, uh, with Paul Ryan now being um, 
uh, the speaker, that he's 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 Daner, but Daner light. He's not going to be as as push, as wimpy as Daner, but he's still kind of a Daner. He's not going to cry every is, five seconds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, I I kind of I can see where people might say that because it seems like Ryan has softened his position since he was first elected to the House, um, and, and he seems to be waffling a little bit on, on certain things. The point is, is that there is there is a step to the right though with him. He wasn't. He wasn't. He's not a McConnell. Uh, and um, uh, what's the other guy's name that dropped out? Not, not his name. Oh God. But McCarthy. Yeah. McCarthy. He's not McCarthy. Now McCarthy was another Boehner. Ryan is not exactly another Boehner. He's a step to, in the right direction, kind of like Bush was a step in the right direction. We just have to make sure that we don't stop at this time, that we continue walking in that direction, because we will get there. But we got to keep moving. Okay. Yeah, I I, it's, I also feel that we need to, and it's not an easy road, and I don't see it happening maybe in our lifetime, but we need more than a two-party system because that's what's really hurting why we don't have decent candidates being put up anymore because you have a 50-50 shot. Now, if you go to a, let's say, four-party for the ease of math, then you would have like a 25% chance of getting in, but we would really need a solid four parties. Well, I kind of, I kind of think of it's. I look at the multi-party systems in other countries, and it's and it's very difficult for them to, to get things done. You know, they have to form coalition governments and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I know some people say, well, that, that that'd be a good thing if Washington didn't get anything done. Well, I kind of like to go back in history when many of our founding fathers lamented a party system. They said we shouldn't have parties. People should just stand on their own for what they believe in. I would agree with that, too. That um, now, now, I would absolutely love the uh, abolishment, not by government decree or fiat, but I would love this abolishment of a party system and just letting each candidate stand on their own so we don't have to go. Th- I mean, this whole this whole season right now for uh, uh, the nomination president uh, for the presidency is really a debacle on a farce. I mean, 17 people in the Republican yeah. Party started out. You know what? Five or six over on the Democratic side, and we're supposed to—they're supposed to pick, you know, among those. And, and in some states, it's not even that that party that gets to choose. I mean, some states they have an open primary, which means that independents and Democrats can go and and, and, and nominate a Republican. It, it, that's that's ridiculous. Yeah. It, 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 so, get rid of the parties altogether. Have each candidate stand on their own. And if they, each candidate has to stand on their own, you're not going to have 20 or 25 candidates up there on a the stage trying to be president. That's all going to get wiped out because most of them are up there simply because somebody in their party is backing them and giving them leverage to stay on, on the stage. If we get rid of all of that, first of all, now you're really going to start taking the big money out of politics because now people are going to start paying attention to each individual, not party. I think the founding fathers had something there, and they said, "Well, you know, party system is not a very good idea." Um, I'm kind of thinking that they were right. No, oh, I'm thinking they're right also. It, but trying to get rid of those parties that would be the hard part. Oh, that's, that's, Even a yeah, step yeah, in the yeah, right that's... direction would be on the, the the ballots taking the R and the D off the name, so people would be more apt to finding out who's running and what they're running about. Because there's, I mean, how many people do you hear? Oh, I just go in there and find the R and I go straight down the R's or straight down the D's. And they're electing yeah. people they don't even know anything about them. Yeah. I, I, I see that happen all, all the time. or hear about that happening all the time. Look, this is what I do when I go into a voting booth. I, I look at the candidates. I look at the names. And I only vote for, for those that I know something uh, about that particular race or position. Yep. I'm not, I don't vote R or D. I don't do a straight ticket. That's the most ridiculous thing any, anybody could possibly do. Oh, yeah, I agree. I mean, I'll, I'll say the um, 2012, I did that just for one reason. And I know probably, it, you know, they didn't get the message, but it was sort of uh, my way, because it was also before I had a show. Um, it was my way of voicing my opinion of I'm tired of the Democrats and what I'm seeing going on, so... I went Republican just to try to give a quote unquote message. Yeah, and I understand that people do that from time to time. They try to they try to use their vote as as a way to to promote a message that you know because they don't think that they're being heard. 
uh, I always vote for the one that I believe is the best, that I know about, uh, the best person for the position. And I always choose, or try to choose the most conservative candidate that's available to me. Now, the last election, um, you know, midterm, it, uh, in a, on a state basis, there was a particular race that uh, was in my district. And I listened to both candidates. And believe it or not, the Democrat actually had a stronger conservative record and message than the Republican. So guess who I voted for? I voted for that Democrat. Now, <laughs> that's, that doesn't happen very yeah, often, often yeah. nowadays. But that's why I'm saying people have to stop looking at the D and the R, and they have to start looking at the person, the man or the woman that's running for the office. Because sometimes you're going to be surprised. Now, if I had just ran a, a straight R ticket, I would have missed out on that conservative Democrat. <laughs> Frankly, I think he should change parties. If, if we're going to have a party system and that guy's over there, he should come over to the Republicans because Jim he's Webb. more conservative than the Republicans did. It was sort of like Jim Webb sitting up there on the Democratic uh, debate. I'm like, this guy does not sound Democratic at all. I mean, I, or Democrat. I would have sworn he was a Republican. Yeah, and that's probably why he's not getting very much support on the Democrat side. <laughs> So I got to take another quick break and then on to the last segment. Again, I'd, hopefully you'll stick around for a few and uh, catch you on the other side of the break. This is a uh, reverb common sense with your host, Jersey Joe. You have been listening to reverb common sense. Hosted by my dad, Jersey Joe. are dark. The people are misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation looking for direction needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, Pundit Press Radio, and YouTube through the SHR Media page for a different kind of commentary on the unpleasant blind guy. Because the truth is not always pleasant. Hey, it's Jersey Joe from Reefer of Common Sense, and we have moved to a new night and time every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on shrmedia.com. You will catch the Reefer of Common Sense uncensored, unfiltered, and only on shrmedia.com. And welcome back to the Reaver of Common Sense. I'm your host, Jersey Joe. And welcome back, Rod, to the show for our last segment of the day. Thank you. Good to be here. <laughs> I, uh, you know what? I'm, 
want to thank you for 